Well, hello and welcome. I have the delight and the pleasure today to have the lovely Rin Bonnie with me. Unfortunately, because she is so far away from where I live, she lives in America and I live in the UK, we've not physically met yet, but I'm sure that one of these days that is going to happen. Um... <laughs> that's true because I feel like you're one of my best friends like oh how interesting like, I know oh. we've not physically been in the same space with with each other um but yeah so I thought this would be an interesting conversation that who knows where it's gonna go so Rin would you like to tell us a little bit about who you presently are <laughs> <What>? <laughs> The current Rin Bonnie. <laughs> current Rin Bonnie. Certainly. So what, who's Rin Bonnie today? Well, I can tell you that I'm a transformational coach. Oh. And I work with individuals one-to-one. -one, and we look at a process called purification, which is the healing of the mind of separation and the forgiveness of everything that looks like it's real. <laughs> so really just letting go of all of it and coming back to the truth of who and what you are. So that's one expression of Ren Bonnie. Um, the other expression or what I'm up to or what's fun is I do impossible projects. So I've spent 10 years hanging out with a man called Michael Neal, who I'm sure we're all familiar with. <laughs> um, I absolutely adore him. And uh, I started doing impossible projects in 2017. So I've pretty much been playing that game. And if you're not familiar, Michael does a 90 day um, group course called Create the Impossible. And he leads you through daily exercises to pick a project that you believe has less than a 20% chance of actually succeeding. <laughs> And then literally throwing everything and the kitchen sink at it just to see like what happens, what happens when you're so certain that you know how the world gets created. And then you just start to kind of like pull at the edges and start to get really curious. Like, is that really how the world works? Is this really how things come together? And then watch as miracles unfold, literally just um, the nature of life begins to change as mm. the yeah, the come from starts to shift. So, <clears throat> so that's how I've done life is impossible projects. And so for the last gosh, six years now, it's been uh, everything to me is just a project. And so I approach things with that same lighthearted kind of um, guided, just really playful, like, okay, this doesn't look like this could happen. So what could we do to make it happen? <laughs> I hear you're a no for this. So what would it look like if you were a yes? Like, how do we, how do we play these games with, with what we make up in the moment and then aligning ourselves with a bigger possibility? So the project, well, the bigger project is for St. Louis, Missouri, which is where I currently live to be known as the most loving city in the world. Oh, wow. I like it. I like that. <laughs> what a nice project. <laughs> I know. So that's the game I've been playing for the last six years. And um, I like to believe that it's, I mean, the best way to describe it is it's like you're following the breadcrumbs, right? Like that trail, mm -hmm. Hansel and Gretel through the woods, right? Like mm -hmm. you just find the next thing and then find the next thing. And you know, sometimes it seems like it's all I'm doing. And then other days, it doesn't seem like I have anything to do with it at all. But it's just this constant thread of what how my life shows up. Mm -hmm. So the expression of it um, is currently called the Dyslexia Tutoring Project. And the Dyslexia Tutoring Project is, um, it's creating awareness for dyslexics in the world, right? So hi, we're here. I'm one of them, right? <laughs> and we actually are 20% of the population, which I think is news to people. And, um, and we're just as valuable as everyone else, which I think other people might find shocking as well. <laughs> so um, the, the, the mission or the, the, commitment of the dyslexia tutoring project is that every child deserves to thrive. 
So whatever is required, whatever is needed for every child to be able to read, every child to have access to their wisdom, every child to know that they um, are seen, heard, believed, and accepted, mm. that's the um, that's what we're working on, right? That's what we're working towards. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. That 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 is so needed across everywhere, isn't it? Because I think our education system has definitely been built for one type of person. <laughs> and I don't think it's a dyslexic, but you know, there are many, many different kinds of people and many different, you know, we we have different, you know, dyslexia is 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 one description of one particular, but we all have different learning ways and different ways in which we feel valued and seen and heard. So I think across the board, our education system and it's not teachers you know I think teachers it's the system it's not a, a, a it, it's the system that we're, we're kind of fitting trying to fit people into um and so I think there, there is a, a real need for a more giving loving inclusive system to see like it had never occurred to me when you said we are as valuable as anyone else it had never occurred to me that anyone who that you wouldn't be you know and but equally it's like wow and so yeah to see to see the value in however we show up whoever we are and however we show up I think that is a beautiful project and and needed all over the world not just um in your little corner absolutely but you know we've got to start somewhere so cool <laughs> I have to start somewhere and um I am in my little corner and uh fully willing to uh take on the world so happy to uh expand and uh share it's interesting what you just said because you know that 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 beautiful piece of wisdom from that gorgeous dyslexic mind, Einstein, who said that, um, you know, the same level of thinking that created the problem cannot solve the problem. Yeah. And I just look at, I look at the thinking of what created it and is it still helpful? Because ultimately the question becomes, who was it created for? And, yeah. and it's like, well, it wasn't created for this group, obviously. And it wasn't created for this group, obviously. So like, well, who was it created for? And I'm going to go with nobody. <laughs> like I don't yeah, actually think yeah. that it was designed for anyone, one particular group to be successful. It was just kind of someone's best thinking at the time of, Hey, this would be a good idea. You know, this is what we need. So this is what this should look like. So there is this incredible opportunity for a reinvention for an absolute, you know, setting down of, of everything that we've done so far, and then kind of getting curious and saying, okay, so what else could this look like? How else could we do this? And I, I always come back to, so, you know, there, there is a prejudice and a discrimination against neurodivergence. Like that's just true. So you're different or you're not like us. So therefore it's a problem. And it's like, well, that's interesting. Is it, <laughs> am I like, okay, I don't do it your way. So therefore I must do it wrong. Like those are all really interesting thoughts. Like they're just thoughts. But, you know, calling them to attention and bringing them up for inspection to really get curious about like, wow, why do I think that my way is the only way that this could be done? Like, and why is it that I have to think that the process has to look this way, that there isn't value in other ways of approaching things? And what is it this person does that I can't do? Like, where are their strengths that are my weaknesses? And how can they, you know, rise and fill in the gaps that are clearly missing, you know? Dyslexics are empathetic. <laughs> Dyslexics are very like, I mean, observant and compassionate. And I we 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 tend to be a little bit more feely, but touchy feely and and deeply concerned for other people. So it's an interesting thing that um that we're the ones that are are excluded from the design of education, because that's just the truth. The way that our minds learn is different. And so in order for us me being dyslexic, in order for a dyslexic brain to learn to read, they have to be taught in a different way. And the current education system simply doesn't accommodate that. So if you are a dyslexic, you walk into the room and you're basically told, well, you don't belong here. <laughs> this isn't for you. And you figure that out 
pretty quick because it's like, oh, everyone else is doing this thing and I'm not. And I don't know, how, like you're you're still like directing at me and yet what you're telling me isn't producing the result that everyone else is getting. So what does that mean about me? So then you have this incredibly brilliant, talented mind who then makes up a story that they're not good enough, right? That there's something wrong with them, that they are a problem. And then over time, what you see is that they live into that story, right? That's who they're being. Yeah, yeah. It, it becomes a loop and it's difficult to see. Do you think you're a problem and project that? Do they think you're a problem and reject it? It's, it's, it becomes a two-way thing, doesn't it? There's a beautiful um, book, Minster Fuller quote about um, creating, like creating it, something beautifully new instead of trying to do anything with what's already there or even talking about how bad what already there is create something amazing that blows it out of the water anything that that you know so yeah <laughs> you, you, let's do that, that. yeah I am that, so that, that to me like people are going to stop talking about how bad other things are if there is something so amazing that it it blows their mind how it, it can work and you know where we are in the world today with the advances that we have got and with the ways and means that we have got to to help people we don't it does not look to me and one of the things I know about how the world works and how this all works and when you look at it from a spiritual perspective and you know the Einstein quote the problem can't be solved with the same level of consciousness but also what that incorporates is a problem cannot exist without the answer also existing they the, 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 they are two sides they so the answer to this problem already exists so it's not you know it's totally doable and you can absolutely see where we are in the world and it, it's fascinating isn't it the um impossible projects because my impossible project at the moment is building a house it's uh you know building my own house I'm physically like with these hands um building this house from having zero knowledge zero I mean my partner yeah, um he's he's got some expertise but just working it out as we go along how we will afford it how we will fund it what will happen next what and exactly what you described just throwing stuff at it and behind doing this for me is a similar kind of thing to what you're talking about it's like looking at how this works and the the idea that from where you're standing no that's impossible <laughs> And it's like, yeah, but what if it's not? <laughs> what if you just take the next step and take the next step and take the next step? Because I, I think with these things, like when you say something like, you know, I'm going to change the, the face of how the whole planet views dyslexia or something like that. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, that just but you do one thing. You do one thing. And even like you said, some days there isn't anything to do. Mm -hmm. But then other days there's lots to do but it is just like edge forward edge forward edge forward and it's amazing how much ground you cover when you actually stop then because I know that like with our house project we the land became ours on the 1st of December and we've just been going and doing stuff and, and doing bits and pieces and preparing we're, we're going to live in a caravan on the land and we've been preparing for that and then the other day I looked back at the last lot of pictures we took when we went to look at the barn before it belonged to us. And now, and I hadn't looked since December, I hadn't compared those two pictures. And it was like, wow, I'd forgotten how much ground we covered. I'd forgotten how much we had done. And I'm sure, you know, with with what you are doing and what, what is going on in the world, I'm sure there has been huge changes to how even 20 years ago, even like 10 years ago, somebody going into school with dyslexia to somebody going into school now, there will have been ground covered. There will have been diff there will have been changes made. There will have been things are happening. Absolutely. I as you were talking, I was thinking about what is required, right? Like the impossible project that you created you know, what I'm working on here in St. Louis. And, and it was, it was just the decision to do it. Right. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, such, it's such a simple thing. It doesn't sound like much, but it's the most 
powerful thing mm. that we can do in this human experience, which is to literally set a course heading. It's to say, okay, what is it that you want? And you, you know, stare down, I'm going to this land and I'm building this house. Like this is happening. And I'm not going to go into the thinking of why it couldn't, shouldn't, wouldn't yeah. like no way, right? Not people like me, like none of that. Just this is what I'm doing and I'm going to go for it. Like, and it will, I, I will trust that the road will rise up to meet me as I start taking the steps and all that I need will be provided. <clears throat> And yeah. for me, it's, it's been, it's been the same thing. It's yeah. like making that decision for, okay, this is what I'm going to do because the, the reality of it, even trying to take on um, a single city, which is, you know, the goal, right? So if I'm looking at the 30,000 students element, I mean, the under 18s in the city of St. Louis, statistically, we're talking about 6,000 children, and that's like, okay, well, how are you going to help 6,000 kids? And it's like, well, I can do the math. It's $45 million. <laughs> I mean, that's the simple solution. I just go to the bank and get $45 million and turn around and pay the people that can provide the services and these kids read. And, you know, Bob's your uncle. We all live happily ever after. Like, it's not a problem. Like, that's pretty simple. But it's like, oh, well, okay, but you can't do that. Can you do that? Like what, 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 huh? <laughs> like, how does that come together? Where does, where does it come up against the reality of my thinking and how can I live into who it is that I'm choosing to be outside of circumstance, right? Because I'm sure it doesn't look like these hands should be building a house, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that there could be an argument made that this human probably, you know, mm. isn't a person that should be, you know, spearheading this campaign. And here I am. And we, I we said, yeah. Always, we can always find, I've noticed whichever way I look, if I decide to look at this being too hard and something I can't do, I can find plenty of evidence for that. Mm. And if I look at this being, okay, I can just do the next thing. Let's see what happens after that. It looks like that's kind of what we've done up till now. And but, I mean, this started for me before the land, I saw the land and it was a year um, until I owned the land. And like the first day that I saw the land, I had, I, I think Beck was checking. I think I had something like 50 pounds in my bank, you know, and I wanted to buy this plot of land. Um, it's it's a, a building plot. I wanted to buy this building plot and I wanted to build and it looked impossible. And it was like, right, okay. But like you said, the decision was made. And what, what I love also about these things, it's, it doesn't look to me like it's a mistake when, when these things land in our mind. It's like, I don't imagine that I don't imagine that you'd never considered anything. And then all of a sudden this idea, it's like things have been leading to this. You, you yourself are dyslexic. You've had experiences. It's almost like you've been prepared for this in, in one sense of, the world of your entire life in one sense. And then all of a sudden this seed lands in your head and it is kind of, to me, it, it, it's like part of the divine plan. It's like someone says, like you said someone asked it doesn't there are many many reasons that you could say I shouldn't be spearheading this campaign but equally this this happened to you you know I could very easily sit here I know one of my things for quite some time you know if we, we're on this call like this and I'm thinking oh my gosh I can't talk about my house because Rin's doing this amazing thing with dyslexia and I'm building myself a house and it's and what I see is we are each called in our ways and I know part of what I'm doing is proving that something that looks impossible can happen mm -hmm. and whether that looks impossible you, you, however that looks impossible what it, it is like you say if we can get past the made-up limitations of our own thinking we are limitless and to me, when we are called into these things, it's like he, you get past these. Here's, here's what you see as, as limiting. Can you see past that? I'm going to help you see that. Let's, let's see past that. 
And that it's, it's like the fact of insight. Like I know when I work with people, it's not so much what my insights are that's interesting to other people, but the fact that human beings have insights, the fact that we do that. And this is, to me, it's a similar thing. It's not the details of what is impossible and the project. It's the fact that we get these seeds, we get this, and then we get asked to look past our limiting thinking. And that's doable. <laughs> it's the living demonstration of how life works. Mm. Because it's, it's one thing to just hear about it. And, and you know, because you're not being it. When, when I read about it, something that happens to another person and I think, you know, you know, for example, like there was a billion dollar draw on a lotto last night, right? So someone, someone today is a billionaire and I can like think about that and it's, and I'm like, huh, that's really an interesting thought. Like they're over there doing that, but I'm not experiencing it. It doesn't look real to me. It doesn't look like something that I could experience, right? Mm. Because Oh, that only happens to those people. And I'm not one of those people that only happened. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's so easy to disassociate from it as it not being us. <clears throat> and that conversation around how life works and recognizing the process of insight, recognizing the sheer <laughs> um, miracle that occurs when we get out of our own heads and just kind of see the life that's in front of us as opposed to the meaning we're making about it. Like those experiences are what transforms the world. And so allowing other people to how it works, not because you need a whole mess of people going out and building their own houses. Like that's totally your lane. <laughs> Nobody else needs to, unless that's their thing, go yeah. for it. But yeah. that's not yeah. the point. It's not, hey, yeah. you know, come come see what I'm doing because I want you to do the same thing. No, it's it, come see what I'm doing because this is how life works. Yeah. Like this is the design of it. And when it's you're possibilities get opened. <laughs> Like there's possibility for you too. There's yeah. infinite possibility for every single one of us once we understand how the system is designed and we're able to make those course headings. Like we're able to make those decisions and say with clarity and certainty, this is what I'm doing and then live into that, right? Because the thing that rushes in, at least for me, of course, is the fear. It's like, oh, <laughs> how's that going to happen? And it's like the same way the rest of your life has happened. Every single step of my entire 45 years of existence has been blessed by grace. And I didn't see it at the time because I was just living my life. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, when I stop and look back, it's like, oh, wow. Like, I got to this step, like, wow, isn't that extraordinary? And what's next? Like, I'm so delighted and excited and just in love with the idea of it, right? It's grin, gasp, and giggle is the way that Michael describes it, right? So like, if what you're doing makes you grin, grasp, and giggle, like that's the life you're living. Like that mm -hmm. one right there, whatever that looks like for you is what there is to do. So um, yes, it is. it has been such a beautiful unfolding. And I love, I love the... <laughs> those moments when you realize that there is a bigger plan at play, right? The, the phone call that I set up with the woman, right? Like I, I got the nudge to create this communication. So we had this call and it was like, yeah, but not this week and not that week. So can we meet the next week? Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, sure. I'm not going to make up anything. Like, of course we can meet that week. What day is good. So Tuesday. Okay. We meet on Tuesday. Well, from the time I booked that call until the Tuesday we had the call, my life completely transformed. <laughs> right? And I was like, well, that's really interesting and cool. So today I get to talk to this woman. And so I get on this call with her and we're talking and I said, well, I'm actually working on this grant application and I could use some professional expertise because I don't speak that language. That's not my, that's not my lane. And so I think it would be really helpful in this process if I had some educational professionals who have the degrees in the, you know, all of the 
Mm. verbiage in the, right, the research study right can point to these things because that's their language that's their lane that's how they communicate and she's like oh I can help you and so she literally jumped onto that application and then I turned it in yesterday because it was due yesterday but three weeks ago I didn't even know that I was going to be completing that application <laughs> So it's like, okay, how did that work? Like, who wrote this script? Because it's perfect. Like, it was exactly what I needed it to be. But wow, like, I couldn't even make that up. Even in my wildest imaginations of like, okay, what's the month of March, April going to look like for me? Like, there was nothing in me that would have said, okay, and on this day and on that day, and then this is going to happen and that's going to happen. And you're going to go here and there and this and this. And it's like, whoa that beauty that it's not on me, that there's something so much bigger at work that I get to surrender into, that I get to show up for, that I get to allow myself to be guided and the joy that gets experienced just from that, that it's it's just like the best feeling ever. At least that's how it shows up for me. Is that what you're feeling with your house? <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. And, and the same, you know, there are so many things that, it, it's like that the, the the timings of how it happened like when we first saw the land when the land became ours when you know with, with what we've done so far it, it is if things had been on my timing this would not be where we are now with this <laughs> but it's like that's not how it works and and a huge lesson in this that I'm really relearning learning more deeply seeing again being hit over the head by is that whole this isn't this isn't on your terms you 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 like you said you know I made that decision this is what I'm doing I'm building this house this is what I'm doing and I remember you know the first moment that I saw the land I'm like this land is mine and like my partner looked at me and he was like yeah right you know <laughs> come on, let's go home and have a cup of tea, dear. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. And then, you know, here we are. And it's it's really fascinating for me to also watch his journey with this because he has, he has now just got to the point, obviously the land belongs to us and he never saw that coming. And now the land is ours and he's kind of like, right, there's zero budget for the build. Don't know how we're going to do this. Don't know how this is going to work, but okay, you just tell me what we're doing next then you just tell me what we're doing next because that seems to be what you do <laughs> it's like, and he's sort of putting all his trust in 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 me to to lean into and lead this and that literally makes me grin gasp and giggle because it's it's hilarious that it's like yeah and that very very much and I'm guessing a similar thing to you I don't know but it just feels like I have to keep kind of going, right, just slow down and stay here because if you just take the next step, that's fine. And I love, love, love playing the game like in, in the evenings or, you know, when I'm in bed or if I'm tired or something, I dream about my beautiful house. You know, I'm kind of like, wow, this is going to be amazing and I'm going to have this here and that's going to be there and that's going to be. So I'm in a really, really, really good feeling with that. But I never get or, you know, if I find myself getting caught up in the how, then I know that I'm in the weeds. I know that I'm, it's like, right, just so, you know, with all the things that have happened with, with that, it's like, yeah, just imagine how amazing it will be when every child gets an education that is perfect for them. Just swim in that gorgeous, gorgeous feeling and take the next step. And that looks to me like that's the only thing that is ours to do. All of that other shizzle get just lays out, as you say, we lift our foot up and the, the, the ground, it, it just meets and it works. And it Yeah, for me, it's it's the the obvious thing to do is that every conversation that I have, every person that I connect with, I create this possibility for them. Mm -hmm. And I give them the space to be this, to be a part of this commitment and to live into this expression of life. That St. Louis, Missouri is the most loving city in the world. And that's like, oh, 
well, what does that look like? How does that feel? Like, <laughs> whoa, like how do we treat one another? And and what's what's the impact? And like, how do we get along? And 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 what are the resources and what gets created? And oh, like what a what a wonderful thing that is. What a what a what a fantastic way to choose to live life. Like there's so much possibility in it. So um it's a gift. Like I, I am so delighted to have been given this calling or <laughs> whatever impossible project or, you know, great idea, but it, it's, it's all that matters to life. Like there's such, there's such a beautiful possibility that gets created when we realize what life is for. And it's that infinite expression of love and joy, of peace and connection, when it's beyond the strivings of the ego and the, the need to be safe because we're so afraid that something's going to happen. And it's like, uh-huh. <clears throat> so if you just stopped that, like just gave that up and looked again to see that the person standing next to you is just this in incredible, extraordinary human, right? With a heart full of love, just like you. That's like, oh, well, how can I not love you? Because you're just like me <laughs> or you or you or you or, or, you know, all of them. Like the, the, the beauty of the expression is that we are taking responsibility for all of our children. I refer to them as the STL city kids. So it's like, it's not my kid that needs to succeed. It's not, you know, mm, my group that needs to win it's it's no like when all kids are reading then we've won when all kids have the ability to thrive then we've won and it doesn't matter what color skin they have and it doesn't matter how much money they have and it doesn't matter about their um any of the details of of what makes them uniquely human like that's not what's important the fact that they are valued and valuable right every single one of them that that's what they need to know and that's what needs to get expressed and that's what we're living into so that's the world I want to create and I am so like interested to see in a year from now because we've booked in <laughs> Yeah, we've walked in again to um, repeat this conversation a year from now to see, you know, with all of this, where where this has gone, what what's what's happened between now and then, and what what I really see in in all of this is whether it's a microcosm or a macrocosm. It you know, as above, so below. It's like it's it's all mirror images or whatever it's all it's all the, the same expression and the starting point again if we just come back down to with these projects like it's the next step and it's also kind of seeing okay this love this expression of love and acceptance starts within me and each one of us you know I don't mean it starts within you each one of us see it starts within me it's like yeah this is where this starts this is that's where the possibility is born within each one of us. There's a, a correction that can occur. And maybe this conversation is helpful for that. The belief that to change the world, you have to go outside <laughs> and do <laughs> whether it's planting more trees or walking around with signs or writing letters or any of the things that occur to the human to do to change right like if I do this out here and create an action it's going to have an impact on what it is that I want it to have an impact on and to your point what you're saying right like that's not nearly as helpful as it is to do the work within, mm -hmm. to stop and get quiet and look at ourselves. Because the reflection of the external is just what's true in the internal. And yes, I am the spokesperson for dyslexics, but it's because 
I was the one who was in denial of my own dyslexia, right? So mm -hmm. um, it wasn't, it was, it was literally a year ago. What is today? The fourth? That's really, really interesting. <laughs> it was a year ago today that I did a workshop at my new job and was given some training where they introduced me to an idea called passing, which I had heard of because I read books and I like, you know, it had been in the conversation, but I had never seen it as true for me, right? I'd never heard it about myself. And I was like, oh, what is that? Oh, that's when you show up to life and you pretend to be someone else. Oh, okay. Like, Ooh. oh. And so usually they talk about it in diversity, equity, and inclusion spaces. So people who identify as a different gender or um, or have, um, you know, sexual orientation or, right, the expressions of humanity. So, so they have to pretend that they're not that to fit into mainstream society so that they won't be... Um, victimized right and so and what that does to your soul when you pretend to be someone that you're not and so I'm listening to this and I was like oh well I'm dyslexic and it was like yeah but you're not because you don't let yourself be like you spend your entire life hiding and pretending like you're not so much hyper vigilance, hyper control to ensure that every word that comes out of this mouth is perfect. Every word that gets spelled with these hands is perfect. No one knows that I'm dyslexic because I am so insane to ensure that I never, ever, ever slip. And that looking good was costing me everything. Mm -hmm. And so that was the minute where it was like, oh, hey, I can just be myself. Like I can stop apologizing for me. And yeah, sometimes I mix up letters when I, especially if they're like three letters and they are the, right, it's the abbreviation of something, I guarantee we'll mix those up. STP, TPQ, what like, yeah, no, I can't. Like I know I will mess it up. And every time I did that in a, in a professional setting, I always apologized. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And I heard myself and I'm like, what am I apologizing for? Like, they know what I meant. <laughs> Everyone knows what I'm talking about. But I'm so certain that I'm wrong because I've been told so many times that dyslexics are stupid and incapable and incompetent. And I was working so hard to not be that. And it's just so fascinating. So I was like, I woke up to it. I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is crazy. I don't have to do this. And then I really got just how hard it is and the miracle that my life has been because I've never gotten an accommodation for anything. So even with my expansive mind, I still was able to run with neurotypical, right? Average people. I went to college, I got a degree, which dyslexics don't do. And I graduated, you know, without any type of formal assistance. I did it the regular way. And so it had lived in me that there was no need to accommodate. <laughs> there was no need to see them as separate because you can just act normal. And so that's what dyslexic should do. And it was like, you know, uh -uh, not even a little bit. And it was so liberating. Like that was the moment that I was freed. And um, so, so that's the story that I tell is, is just how hurtful, how painful, how limited, how unhappy, how distressed, how disrupted, right? My poor mental health could definitely point to the fact that I was pretending to be someone that I wasn't, right? Um, all of that, right? The moment that I'm allowed to be me, that I accept me, like, oh, I'm dyslexic. Now my work, maybe not so much, but that's okay. <laughs> Fine the ability to just accept who I am, like just really love me, like see me and say, wow, yeah. you know, I'm so grateful to be this person. I'm so grateful to be me. I'm so grateful to wake up every morning with this experience in this life and, and be doing what it is that I'm doing. Like that in itself is just a gift.
Like that's all that there is. And from there, literally anything's possible. Like there's nothing that I could, I mean, if I can do that, like really getting money for dyslexic tutoring is not a thing. <laughs> really waking people up to how amazing dyslexic minds are is not a thing. Like that's just joy, right? That's this the joy of of being able to love people for who they are and 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 teach them to accept themselves, right? Just by accepting myself. And I, I think that's the big thing because I think no matter what, I don't think I've ever met anyone who has just said off the bat, yeah, totally accept myself, totally love myself, totally, you know, and certainly anyone who, who does say that has, they've come to that experience. That That isn't, you know, having gone through the whole rejection of self not liking of self or all of those kinds of things and then come come to a place of seeing the um the folly in many ways of that you know and for whatever reason it is for whatever um whatever has happened whatever has been our experience to have us believe that I mean, my whole business is called dare to be you because it's based on me living goodness knows how many years absolutely trying to be someone I was not try or trying to be what I thought someone else needed me to be and you know from the work that I have done I just see that is such a common thing that for whatever reason you know we we all have this story that we're different we're the odd one out we don't fit or some kind of version of this and I'm not right and I need to be different because of this and then some like you say some are more extremes and then you know what even when you're sort of saying the norm I'm like what even is the norm <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> run with the norm what even is that and, and again this comes back down to the systems that we have to teach our children in, at the moment they are the norm and there isn't such a thing I don't believe like you say I don't think it's been created for anyone because I don't think there is anyone who fits the norm it's kind of like no and and there are extremes like there are in in all things like duality create there isn't one well, there are just extremes of things and so yeah it is like um I I heard somebody say, and I, and I can't remember where it was, and it really, really, really just hit me. And, and I guess, again, it is the circles, the, the, the cyclic, cyclic nature of it, saying the problem isn't that we don't love each other. The problem is that we don't love ourselves. And, yeah, it really, because what I have really seen about like you know I've, I've worked a lot around abusive relationships and and that kind of thing and what I see with the cycles within that is if I don't love myself then the thing the way that I can hurt myself the most is by being mean to you because mm -hmm. if I am mean to you you won't like me I won't like me. I have a reason to despise me. You despise me. So I must be right. <laughs> yeah. and, and it piles on. So we, you know, when we hurt, when we really, really don't like ourselves, we are mean to the people who are the kindest to us usually because and not because we don't like them, but because we don't like ourselves. And then they take it personally and believe that we don't like them. So then they don't like us. And it really, you know, the whole thing implodes. And it's like with a starting of self-love and self-acceptance, which comes really, really round to the whole, you know, when we're saying all of these projects and all of these things start with going inside and loving and accepting and believing in ourselves because when we do that, when we look at our true nature, who we are, how this works, we accept ourselves, we begin to love ourselves, we cannot help when we are in a state of ecstasy and self love, we cannot help but express love to others, we, we couldn't stop ourselves from doing it. And equally, when we're in a place of self loathing, we can't stop ourselves from expressing that outwardly to other people
that's it. It's so simple. Like it is so simple. All we are is love and the ability to believe that we're not. Absolutely. And and that's the kicker in one sense. It like it appears to work the other way. And for centuries, you know, we are in this position with it looking like an impossible project to to create a, you know the, the, the city in the world that the people love each other the most the reason that is labeled an impossible project is because of where we have got to for centuries trying to make this work the opposite way around it's like if i don't like myself i need you to like me first and it's like that's not that's never going to solve that's that just perpetuates the problem. <laughs> it's the same thing about looking to change the world by going out into the world and, and taking action. Like yeah. if you want to change the world, look within. But if you want to love yourself, it's not about going out and, and doing things to make yourself lovable. Like love it. You, love it. Love is what you are. And it's that acceptance of it, right? Which is acceptance of the self. Mm. Love is, I am that. <laughs> indeed, indeed, yeah. And and it's it's seeing that and expressing that. And it's interesting because you can express that in all ways and any, and, and I've just, I've seen it in, you know, dealing with um, tradesmen that are delivering stones to where we are and, and helping us with stuff. It's like, how am I going to show up to those people? You know, how am I going to talk about my project and what I'm doing and what it means? And how am I going to show up to that? And it is from a place of love and acceptance of myself. You know, these lorry drivers turn up and they're like, hey, you've made my day. It was, it was really lovely to come and visit. You know, you, you clearly love this place. You clearly, you know, you're not a, a grumpy worker in this. And it's like, yeah. And you can. And that's where it starts, isn't it? And then when we have we make these connections we connect with ourselves we connect with other people and then these conversations to hey and then i'm changing this and i'm doing this and i'm creating you know a city that is that where people really love each other and i'm creating an amazing educational system i'm creating somewhere where every diversity gets welcomed in people are interested because we love ourselves we love them we've created connection What occurs to me is just how powerful each and every one of us is. Yes. Absolutely. Like, truly. Truly what I create and, and miscreate, right? Like I can do both. <laughs> <laughs> I have the skill. Oh, um, me too. <laughs> yes, you do. But, but that clarity to decide to be that to decide to create that to make the decision for it every moment of every day and again that's it it's that simple isn't it it's just like yeah it's that misunderstanding though because simple doesn't mean easy <laughs> like, <laughs> simple well then it must be easy it's like it's easy and the willingness to see it for what it is mm -hmm. requires effort sometimes to show up as love when like when I describe that when we don't love ourselves very much and so then we are mean to the people around us I've been in both of those situations I've been in a situation where I don't like myself so I'm being mean to the people around me and then I've been somebody around someone who doesn't like themselves and so they're being mean to me and like when we're saying what would be the, the simple that we're talking here is that I love myself and show up as love when this person is mean to me 
I don't take that personally and I just love them anyway. It's simple, <laughs> but having been in both of those situations, it's like sometimes that's the hardest ask that, that mm. there is. And then what I see about that is the more that I see the truth in that and even take the smallest steps towards that, the rewards it's like you can't outgive the universe it's like as soon as if you if you even attempt to go in that direction you know it's like yes 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 you know you're cheered on it's like and and what comes and so it it, it gets easier but there 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 are definitely those moments in those times when it's like yeah i've got to i've got to make this ask you know and your head's going great, me, this person, I'm not good enough, or I, whatever, you know, this one, and I've got to ask this, or I've got to show up in this way, or I've got to show love to this person who just said the really horrible thing to me, or whatever it is, and it's like, yeah, that's, it's simple that it works that way, mm -hmm. and lived experience teaches us to lean more and more into it, mm -hmm. There's something about habits and, <laughs> and, and, and just weak muscle is what's coming to mind, right? Yeah. Like the, the inclination is to take it personally and make a story about it. Like, I don't like that person either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're the other. Like, true. Like, let's just do this, mm -hmm. but to make the decision that you're pointing to and be love and love them in, in whatever they're expressing and recognizing that their upset isn't about me personally and that they're just really, really unhappy. Like they don't love themselves. And so they're going to lash out and they're going to express in really violent ways. So to be love in that space, to choose love in that space, to love them, even when they're unlovable, right? That's, that's, what there is to do. And you're right. The universe opens wide up. <laughs> like, what you did. It throws your party. Like, yes, yes. You, you showed up in the moment when it looked like it was impossible. When the moment that it looked like, you know, it wasn't love. I chose to be love anyway, like, because that's who I am having nothing to do with anyone else. I do this for me because I know who I am at the end of the day. Yeah. So I choose to be love regardless of circumstance. And, um, and the more that is my reality, the more that becomes my reality <laughs> and the easier that becomes because it is my reality. So, but it is that first decision, right? That choice to love yourself, just mm -hmm. like anything else. So maybe for some, that's an impossible project <laughs> right there. Like that's it. Yes. <laughs> Myself would be to take on, to just see what that looks like. Cause wow. yeah, that would, that would be an amazing one, wouldn't it? How many people we can get to just make the choice to love themselves? No matter wow. what. Wow. No matter what. Yeah, no matter what. That would be a fun game to play, wouldn't it? <clears throat> wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> Maybe there's... Oh. <laughs> wow. I could um, carry on this conversation with you all day. <laughs> I'm aware of the time and we have been talking for quite some time that, that yeah there was absolutely some some gold some really 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 beautiful things in there um if people want to reach out to you find out more about your project connect with you where's the best place for people to find you uh it's www.thedyslexiatutoringproject.com Oh, and I, I'll put that under this video anywhere that I share it um and obviously Rin is a friend of mine so if you can't find her anywhere else and you know me do reach out to me I'm sure I can connect you <laughs> well I'm on Facebook and social media yeah. so yeah. all you have to put in is Ren Bot and I'll show you. I don't think you're hiding anywhere are you <laughs> no that was amazing thank you so so much a beautiful call thank you thank you thank you